So here's the plan. Eight skeins of Ecru uh, BFL from Sheepfold. They are soaking in about seven litres of water and that was basically a new bottle of vinegar. So about 420 ml of vinegar measured out and that's going to soak for a while. So these are the guys that I've got my BFL from, Sheepfold, uh, sheepfold.co.uk. Just to make sure that the skein on top um, isn't sort of drier than the ones underneath, as well as having uh, pushed it down under the level of the water a few times just to make sure that it is soaked. I've also put a layer of cling film over the top. I don't know if it's necessary. Um, but I just thought that might help to make sure that it's not sort of drying out and therefore for, for whatever reason not being as evenly coated as the rest because I'm hoping for maybe a little variegation but I don't want way too much variegation in my dye. Eh, we'll see what happens, right? Uh, it's had an hour and a half in here soaking in the vinegar water and it is ready now to come out. Basically I'm going to uh, haul them out and let the excess water um, come out of them. I'll actually squeeze it out obviously when I'm using two hands. And then once I've done that I'll put the pan on the hob and uh, start getting ready for actually dyeing. Okay, so I've just hung up this skein because I wanted to show you something that's been frustrating me. You can see here that somehow there's, there's a few strands that are just loose and I'm, I'm not sure what that's about. Now this is the only skein that I have, uh, I wound it into a ball, um, so I re-skeined it on my Umbrella Swift. Now that's not quite uniform all the way around so I wonder if that's why but you know it wouldn't make sort of two two strands massively more sag than the other so I don't know what I'm doing wrong when I'm skeining that gets this or is this just normal because it's been hand wound rather than machine done and these things just happen and don't worry about it but it'd be really cool if anyone's got any ideas as to what's going on with my skeining that would be good to know So all eight skeins are now in the tub. I squeezed out the excess uh, vinegar water and here is what the water looks like. So you can see, uh, or rather you can't see <laughs> the bottom. Um, so it's obviously rinsed the wool slightly as well because it was completely clear when I put it all in. Um, and the vinegar makes little bubbles, which is kind of cool. So I've got six litres of hot water in the pan now. Um, just getting that up to temperature. Whilst that's on the hob, I am making up my little dye solution. So I'm using Dark Brown by Sugar Flare, which is made in England. Um, it's basically a gel uh, food dye, uh, and my yarn is sat there waiting to go in. So this is a quarter teaspoon. That's all I can fit in my little in my little dye pot, and then I'm just going to stir it into the water. I wasn't actually sure how dilute it would look when I put it in the water, and I kind of realised I don't have to make the dye separately and then add it to the water. I can just do it in the water. So I poured what I was making in, and I've added. In total, three quarters of a teaspoon of the food dye gel. Now, it's a different make and lots of people suggest different amounts. And obviously, however much you put in is supposed to just be however much there is to saturate into the wool. But I'm trying to do eight skeins at once here, so I may end up having to over dye anyway, even if the water runs clear, which it hasn't done yet in any of my tests. But then I've only been doing a yard or half a yard at a time. We can see that the water is starting to steam a little, which means it's probably up to temperature. So I'm going to go and carefully add the yarn to it and then cover it up and get it soaking. 
Now this pan I'm using is actually my jam pan, which means it's designed to evaporate the water off, which obviously isn't great for getting it up to temperature. So I popped in my little thermometer and it actually looks like it's actually at about 50 degrees Celsius, which really isn't hot enough. It wants to get up to about 80 Celsius, so I think 180 Fahrenheit from what I've read. So I'm going to cover it up and try and get the water up to temp. So one of the challenges that I face in my little makeshift laboratory, which is actually just the kitchen, is the fact that we have, unfortunately, NAF electric ceramic hobs, which are really difficult to control, just like it is for me to speak. And you have six temperatures and that's it. So when I was doing it in the smaller pan, I kind of worked out that I had the lid on so far and the temperature set um, a little bit lower because obviously it was losing less heat because it was more compact. So here I fashioned a lid out of foil, shiny side down. And I've got the temperature a little higher, which is normally what I'd have it on if I wanted to boil, say, a pan of pasta or something. But because the pan's so much bigger and the, the, the surface area at the top is so much larger, I'm hoping that will be about right to keep the temperature just under boiling. I may have to experiment a little bit with getting the water to the right temperature before I put the yarn in. So I'm following instructions from several different sites, but the one that I am sort of using as my overview is actually the Knit Picks blog. And some sort of suggest you put the yarn in hot water to soak and then straight into hot water in the pan and no 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 no. Whereas this one actually talks about getting the pan up to simmering and then putting the yarn in and I think for the sake of having control I'm going to try and see if I can get the pan to simmering before I start trying to add yarn because then at least I'll know it's roughly the right sort of temperature and the heat input and output's about right. And I will keep an eye on things with my trusty thermometer. And I have in fact broken out in case that's not good enough, out of its packaging, never been used, a sort of meat thermometer as well, which may or may not be useful, but I figure um, it can't be too safe. Wish me luck. Okay, I'm impatient as ever, so I've shoved the yarn in and we'll let it continue to uh, rise up to temperature. Now I don't know if you can see, but I realise as I'm pushing it in, can you see how it kind of looks a bit blue in places? So I'm a little bit worried that um, the colour's separated or whatever, but even just popping it in now and then looking at the colour of the yarn on top there, it's gone this gorgeous brown colour. So I'm hoping that just by gently pushing it under the water, just to make sure that it's all soaking, it will get up to temperature. It is nice and hot, which is why I've got my rubber glove on. I'm not so fussed about dyeing my hands brown, but it's too hot to handle. <laughs> now that that's all set up, I shall pop the thermometer back in and see what happens. So this is my setup, and you can see that I've poked the meat thermometer through the foil into the heart of the yarn. So you can see it's about 40 degrees on the inside, those Celsius, which is nowhere near hot enough and the jam thermometer is registering about 50 or something so I'm just going to let it stew as it were and try and get the heat up to where it needs to be and then once it is up hopefully it will start to suck in the dye. Fingers crossed. Okay, so according to both thermometers, we're up to temperature. It's about 85 on that one, and about the same on that one. There is a little bit of bubbling happening in the corners, and obviously everything always says, you know, don't let it boil, and obviously you're... Well, I'm assuming part of that is to do with not felting it, because the boiling agitates the, the wool. So hopefully just a tiny bit of bubbling isn't going to cause too much of a problem, but we shall see. I'll keep an eye on it. I've taken the foil off, as you can see. Um, the water is um, not anywhere near as dark as it was, so that seems to be working well in terms of, sort of absorbing the colour. It has sort of a bluish tinge to it now, which is a bit odd, but I know that from what I've read, the blue can sometimes be the slowest one to take up or sometimes need a bit more um, 
acid to be taken up, so we'll see what happens. Um, as I say, I'm going to leave it a little while, I'll keep an eye on it, I'll keep coming back and checking, making sure it doesn't get too hot. If I need to turn the temperature down on the, under the pan, I will do, but I'm hoping that having the top open like this will allow more of the heat to escape and just sort of keep it at the right temperature. So we'll see. So not long after um, I recorded the last little segment, the temperature did continue to climb and climb, so it got up to nearly 90 degrees and we're starting to bubble a little bit more rapidly, so I've taken it off the heat, I've turned down the hob that I was cooking it on, I've just put it to one side for the moment, and just out of interest I grabbed um, a little sample of the water, there's a definite blue colour to the water. That's not too surprising actually, I had a look at the food dye that I'm using and it lists two colours, the brown and a blue in it, which presumably helps to darken it. I'm tempted to actually turn off the hob and let it cool, because at least the brown has been absorbed and I can over dye it again with the same technique. In fact, yes, I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I know that a watch kettle never boils, however apparently a watch pot never cools down either. I'm going to have to try and summon up all the patience that I have left. On the plus side, uh, whilst poking around very carefully, I noticed that the water was looking a lot better, and indeed it is now clear. So whatever was going on with the blue dye, it's now gone as well, and the water is actually clear. So it's totally worked. Yay! As ever, I'm impatient, and I carefully pulled them out the pan and squeezed off the excess water when we were about 40 degrees. <laughs> because I just couldn't wait for them to get to room temperature. But everything seems fine, I was just, just super, super careful not to agitate them so that they felt or anything, and uh, they all seem fine in that regards now. You can see the brown colour is a little light at the moment, so I'm going to re-dye them. There's another reason I'm going to re-dye them as well, and that is because, for some reason this has particularly affected the ones at the top, but some of them came out with blue patches. My assumption here, this is one of the better ones, although it's quite patchy in the brown, which is fine. That can be like variegated brown, which is which is fine. I'm, I'm happy for that. So it's why I kettle dyed it. So I was like, I'm, I'm happy for that to work that way around. Um, but yeah, the the blue patches seem to be where the skeins were quite densely packed together, and oddly enough, more so the ones on top than the ones underneath. So I don't know if that's because. I poked the skeins and somehow scraves out the brown dye but not the blue or something like that. So over dyeing is going to be necessary, both for the shade and to try and fix the blueness. I am hoping that since um, the blue has come out of the brown and the brown will happily dye up, that I'll end up with something like this one. And this one it was at the bottom of the pan. There was even a patch where it was right on top of some dye that hadn't dissolved. Um, so the very dark brown has come out on this skein already. Um, and there's even some slightly bluey patches on here. So not perfect for a first try, but you know, the only way to learn is by making mistakes. So we'll see what happens when I over -dye. To do the over I'm going to do it in two batches um, so that there's more room in the pot for them to move. Also, I did find a recipe online that suggested ratios of water to weight of yarn and so on. And basically it seemed that I had used twice as much yarn compared to the amount of water and vinegar and everything I used. So I'm going to halve it and hopefully the second time round will go much better. So I've got half the skein soaking in vinegar with the appropriate ratio of yarn weight to vinegar. There's a little less water but that's just because the tub's not quite big enough but fingers crossed that's okay. And then I've already made up 
my Dimex. And the idea being that I will half that, and half will go in one lot and half will go in the other. So I've put in the amount for the full 800 grams, um, which I've decided to do as two quarter teaspoons. I did three last time, but I don't want to go super, super dark black, so I'm going with two, because I can always put more, but I can't take it away. So I've gone for a little bit less than the same again. And I have the pot heating up already because it did take a long time to get up to temperature so I thought I'd start it off now and get it going. And you can see that these do have some blue in them but I've actually chosen the ones to go in the water. I've chosen to do the ones that I think are the most troublesome. That was the three nearest the top that had the most blue and the one right at the bottom that had the already dark spot. My reason being that if something goes horribly wrong then uh, it will be the four least retrievable skeins that get lost or damaged beyond repair and then at least I'll be able to save the other four skeins and do something with them and go buy more to make a jumper. The yarn has had a good 45 minutes soaking in the vinegar and I've just come and measured out uh, my dye and put half back in the jar and my pot is nice and warm so it's time to add in the dye so there's the dye going in and i'll just try and make sure i get all of that in there we go it's looking nice and dark and the pot's currently at about 55 Obviously it needs to get a lot hotter, but I'll pop the yarn in now, cover it up, and then see how things go.